one week ago, I asked you guys in my Discord to submit an art piece that you wanted me to try to recreate in my own style. This project was super intimidating for me, but I was really ready to push myself with something new and challenging, and honestly, I had a lot of fun. It definitely went places that I was not expecting and was super, super hard. Uh, I was not expecting to struggle with it so much, but I'm really glad that I pushed through because man, some of these things turned out really cool. And if you guys like anything that you see here in this video, just know that all of the project files that I use in this will be available on my Patreon. So without any further delay, let's jump right into the first project. The first project comes from an artist by the name of Minty. I'm gonna leave a link to their art station in the description below, please go check them out. They submitted this this kind of ocean, spacey, star, abstract kind of piece, and I really, really liked it. It was one of the first things that got submitted, and I knew right away that I wanted to do something with it. So let's get started on this. First things first, we need to create our ocean here, and I think I'm just gonna do this with a plane. We're gonna do something really simple, and we're just gonna throw the ocean modifier on it because it gives us an ocean for free. And if you push it to its limits, you can get like really creative with it. From there, we're just gonna pick out a camera angle for our starting position so we can like better build our scene. And I think that like somewhere around here is probably pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Now we're just gonna add some detail to our ocean by throwing a displacement on here and a subdiv. We swap those around and you can see we've got some really cool wave details. I know we're looking really rough right now, but I promise give it some time and this one really came together. I was super proud of this. But now that we've got our ocean all set up, we are gonna work on our hourglass and these are really fun to make. We're gonna start off by cutting a sphere in half and then just extruding it. We're gonna be doing a lot of extruding this episode. Once we've got it extruded, we're just gonna add some smaller details. You know, we're gonna round out the bottom. We're gonna add these little lips, duplicate it and flip it. Then we add our posts and the little base platform that we work on conjoining the meshes together so that everything acts as one piece. And there we go. Next up is texturing, and it, honestly, the textures were super simple, a little bit of displacement here or there, and in my opinion, the textures really brought everything together. After that, we're gonna make a little vertex selection here, we're gonna duplicate everything, and then we're gonna like shrink it in a little bit, and this is gonna be our sand inside the hourglass, so again, we're gonna start extruding everything down, filling out the space a little bit, and just making it look like sand. And of course, sand doesn't stack uniformly, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a little bit of warping by grabbing vertices and stretching them out around the model, and just kind of making things fall more naturally. Up next, I just added this super Super nice sand texture that I got from Bridge for free. After that, I tried to apply it to the cone and use like a little noise map as an alpha to like make it look like sand falling. I don't really know if it works, but hey, we tried it. Now let's get this guy brought over into our scene and positioned correctly. I wanna to try to match Minty's positions as best I can. With the hourglass all set up and ready to go, we're gonna start working on the lamp. And as you can see, this one is much, much simpler of a model to work with. We're just gonna be making a cube and then setting some faces. You know, we're gonna be conjoining our mesh similarly to how we did with the hourglass. And again, a lot of extruding, insetting, and warping to get the kind of shape that we want. With the basic shape made, we're gonna add some smaller details like these little insets here for windows so that the light can peek through. I'm actually gonna go through and redo most of the topology here because it's just awful. Then we throw a subdiv on it and we round out those outside windows. From there we throw some very basic textures on everything and we get it ready to move into the scene. And again with our positioning we're gonna try to keep it as close to Minty's as possible and once it's in we can take a look at our lighting and I think it's kind of cool. We need to fix this little glass shader here so I'm gonna make that a little bit more rough and kind of play around with the colors here so we get more of a like a pleasing light to look at you know. Now Minty has a bunch of these lanterns kind of spread out throughout the scene and I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate that obviously Obviously, um, not only because it's in their scene, but also because I think it was smart and adds a lot of breakup to a very dark scene. I'm also gonna do some minor fixes to the hourglass shader. I just didn't really like the way the glass was falling. And you're gonna see that a couple of times throughout this video where I just kind of move things around just a little bit. And I may not mention it because it was just a very minor change, not really worth bringing up. But yeah, from here, I got it in my head that I wanted to make the scene a little bit more my own. It felt a little bit too similar. So I, I had this idea to kind of make the ocean go crazy where I was just gonna like duplicate it and spread it all over. And it was gonna be kind of this like abstract like maybe it's like deep within the earth or it's in space on another planet i don't know but just this crazy ocean feel once i got the ocean set up in a position that i liked i started thinking about the star in the background and how i didn't want to do exactly what minty did and with the way my scene was set up it was kind of opening the door to do this like more realistic star maybe and that's when i remembered that last month i made this mandibulb and i thought that this would be perfect to add to the scene so i dragged it in and i started working on the positioning a little bit i didn't know exactly what i wanted but I knew that I didn't want it to be lit up like a star so that it was all bright and we lost all that detail, but I wanted it to take the place of Minty's star. 
So I threw on the rendered mode and you can see immediately we're looking a little sea monstery and not very star. And I kind of leaned into it a little bit. I kind of really liked it actually. And I played around with the lighting and the style of the, the Manda bulb for a really long time until eventually I landed on this. And that's when I realized I don't want this to like be a star anymore. You know, everything was changing all the time. And I was like, damn, okay, this would make really, really cool ice and I started redoing the entire environment. I started duplicating the mandibulb and moving it all around the scene, and the mandibulb itself is like a million polys, so this is where the scene started getting really, really heavy, um, but it turned out super, super cool, dude. Of course, the next logical step was to put a pirate ship in the scene, because how could you not have a pirate ship in this scene? At this point, I started falling in love with the scene, but I felt it was missing uh, just like a few special things to really make the scene pop, and one of those was a particle system, I thought. It just needed to feel a little bit more alive, like there was stuff flying through the air. So what I did is I just put a, a icosphere that I stretched out onto a plane and then made it look like it was flying through the air. And of course that helped so much with the liveliness of the scene. And it made me rethink the positioning of the ship. Like maybe I wanted it to be up on top of this really big wave here. And I thought that that would look cool. And then the silhouette of the ship looked so cool. Like I said, I was starting to really fall in love with the scene, but I felt like maybe it was getting too far away from Minty's piece. So I brought back the star with another mandibulb and I started working on the colors for that that and making everything work. And this is what the final render out of Blender looked like. And out of Blender, it looks good, but now it's time to throw it in After Effects and add some more details and do our colors. First things first was I started by doing a lot of masking because we needed to add more details to our water. As our water is now, it's like, it's totally fine, right? But it doesn't look very realistic. And that's because there's no foam. There's no breakup in the waves. And I'm not a psychopath. I wasn't going to do this all in Blender. So I knew that I could comp in some of those details by using random stock photos and things like that to bring a little bit more liveliness to the scene. So I made some really rough masks and then I started using Puppet Warp to warp the wave into place because we wanted to follow the shape that's already there from our 3D water. We don't want it to stand out too much. From there, I did some more masking, kind of blending in the mats to make sure everything worked out all right. And then we played with our colors to make sure it lined up with the water we already had. After this, I duplicated that exact same process a few times of masking and warping and playing with mats and colors to make sure that everything blended in properly. And we really wanted a lot of break up in this water because with the size of the waves that we had created, it was really, rough water and it made sense for there to be a lot of like turbulence and foam and stuff on top of the water. But not just on top of the water, we also wanted these little splashing elements all around the objects within our scene. So I grabbed different images of different splashes and placed them around each individual object, again taking away the background and then matching our colors so that everything lined up and looked real pretty. And now it's time for some post effects like radio blur and we're gonna throw some glow on it and we're gonna start playing with all of our colors. You know, I masked out each one of these individual lamps to add glow to really liven up the scene, then brought everything into looks and played with all of our colors and tried to get everything looking as nice as I possibly could. With some little finishing touches, this is our finished result. And I have to say, I am really, really proud of this one. It turned out so good when I was so not confident in how this was going to work at all. Um, thank you to Minty so much for submitting this image. I really appreciate it. This one was super cool. So for our second piece, we have this really cool horror short from Sodi Studios or Saudi Studios. I'm not exactly sure how to say it. And this one is super cool. I really like the colors and the lighting in this one. And that's why I chose it. So let's get into my version. Now, immediately I jumped in and I knew that I wanted to change things up just a little bit in the setting because I've been watching a lot of backroom stuff. So I really wanted to create this backrooms kind of environment. And that's where I started. Again, for a lot of the early work on this one, it was just a lot of insetting, extruding, and retopo to make things look nice. However, very early on in this, I knew that I wanted to use handrails and make this kind of like a hospital setting. So I wanted to focus on that super early so that I could get like the, the feeling of the room a little bit better as we later move into placing our camera and making sure that that looks good. Once I had the base handrail modeled for the end of the hallway, I duplicated it and moved it forward. And then I worked around stretching it around the corner to make it fit the geometry of our building a little bit better. Once the handrails were in, I had a decent idea about framing. So I started working on our camera angles and Saudi in their initial render had kind of a handheld look to it. And I wanted to do something similar, but not quite the same. So we ended up with this here. However, I definitely don't change this like every 30 seconds for the rest of this render. 
Thunder. Yeah, so I, I changed it almost immediately. After that was done, I wanted to start working on the basis of the texture, so I started making these little maps for the windows up above, which later become kind of skylights, and I ended up removing the glass for a lot of this. It was just too noisy. As you can see here, it, it was so noisy in this room with the glass, and I really wanted it to work. I tried out my new glass 2.0 shader, and it just wasn't right for the scene, unfortunately. From there, we moved into the tiling on the floor, which instantly, once this was in, the scene started looking like a hospital. It felt very clean, and like it, it did have that kind of backrooms feel to it, which I was really happy about. It was not as hard to get that look as I was expecting. However, what was hard was getting the textures right on these little facets for the handrails. I ended up spending about an hour on these, on and off again, just working on different textures, and I think maybe it was the shape of them that wasn't quite right, but initially, or eventually, I did end up landing on something that I did like. It was about 20 minutes later that I realized that my recording software was not actually recording, so it missed me putting in all these plants. But to be honest, it wasn't all that exciting anyways. I just grabbed these plants from Bridge, they're available for free. Again, you should be using Bridge if you're not, and I just dragged them around the scene because I really wanted to add this like overgrowth feel and I think that it looked super cool. Again, kind of building on the overgrowth feel, I found this kind of construction piece with some barbed wire sticking out of it, and I thought that this would go great in this wall back here. Unfortunately, that did mean I had to kind of retopple the wall and kind of adjust some things, but it was super easy. I just made a vertex selection, deleted all the, the vertices I didn't need, then threw everything into sculpt mode and kind of smoothed out all of those lines. I repeated this process a few times, and honestly, I think it worked out super good to get this kind of look of like chipped paint where you have some depth in the wall still, and it's super free detail. Uh, it's very low effort, and it just looks really good. Once that was done, I duplicated the back wall to add that kind of depth feeling to it, and then I readjusted the boulder so that it matched up with the displacements on the floor and on the wall, so everything looked nice and clean. I started adding textures to the walls. Again, I got these from Bridge, super high quality textures for free, and not sponsored or anything, by the way, just shouting it out because it's super useful. Um, I immediately got distracted from texturing though by noticing that this plant was sticking through the rock and that's when I decided that I wanted to try to add more detail here in the floor you know I took this little piece off the handrail and repositioned it in a minute I'm gonna add like some rubble and things in there and that is just so that this scene looks like it actually took place for a reason you know like this rubble came bursting through the wall broke the handrail and now it's gonna leave pieces all over the ground and stuff so yeah. Once I had the handrail all broken up, this is where Blender really started the chug and I was crashing constantly, but the ending result of making that rail and like all of that construction over there looked so good. It was totally worth it in my opinion. From there, I went in and finished uh, detailing and adding the texture on the kind of chipped paint on the back wall, which again, I think turned out really good. For the next hour or so, it was really just more of the same, kind of moving plants around and adding in new bits and pieces of rubble. I added in a couple of pieces of wood, you know, these planks I thought, they, they add a little bit to the scene, you know, maybe they came out of the wall or the ceiling or something, but yeah, it was really just adding more rubble to this pile and kind of perfecting how everything laid. However, with how often the Blender was crashing, with all these things in the scene, it, it was clear that I needed to do something. So I came up with this idea of laying a sheet underneath everything and then putting a particle system on it, making a custom weight map for it, and then laying out like dust slash gravel stuff underneath the pile in hopes that that would kind of create uh, another layer of depth. And I did this by just taking an icosphere outside the scene and then putting in that weight map for the density. And honestly, I think it turned out kind of cool. You can see here that it's definitely just little spheres when you're up close, but when you're backed off from the scene where the camera actually is, it really does just look like dust hanging out. And I think it worked well. Next, it was time to add some movement to the scene. And I wanted to add these kind of swinging like office lights. So I worked on modeling those for a while and then setting up constraints and animating them. And it turned out pretty good. It took a very, very long time though. But once they were in the scene, I was definitely super happy with how it looked. I thought that it made everything feel so much more alive. After that, I just spent a really, really long time working on lighting, but I was still feeling something crucial was missing from the scene. And that's when I remembered that I had modeled this guy last year for an art competition that I was in, and I thought, you know what? This guy could be perfect if I just threw him in the scene somewhere. I didn't have the time to animate him, but it's just like a dead body on the floor. I think it would have looked just fine. However, once I turned the lighting on, it did look a little bit goofy, but don't worry, we will fix it. It will look cool. I also added a quick like blood splatter texture to him. I just thought that that helped a little bit. Speaking of helping, I think something that would help the scene a lot is if all of these lights flicker. So if you just add a keyframe and then add a noise modifier to your light, you get free flicker. But now it's time to start working on the centerpiece of our scene. Saudi kind of again had this weird like spacey kind of star 
guitar thing in the background and I didn't really know how they made what they made. So I just kind of made my own version where I threw a wireframe modifier on a rounded cube and then some displacements and some subsurf and stuff on it. And I ended up changing this look a lot over the next few minutes. I, I spent a long time messing around with this idea and ultimately I did come to something that I liked, but it took a really long time and a lot of trying out new things to get there. But we did get there. So the only thing left to do is to render it out, throw it in After Effects, play with our colors, and then watch the final thing. So yeah, that was the final render, and I am pretty proud of this one. I don't think it was quite as good as the first render we did, but that's to be expected with an animation I've come to feel. Again, thank you to Sadi for linking this to me. I'm gonna have Sadi's socials linked down below, and I've been saying your name wrong the whole time probably, so I'm sorry about that. But yeah, if you wanna poke through any of these project files, they are available on my Patreon. You guys can download them, dig through them, because I know that there's not a super detailed explanation of everything here. It was definitely not a tutorial and more of like a fun exercise for me this week. If you guys did like this, please let me know down in the comment section below, because this is super cool and a lot of people submitted stuff that I did not get to get to and if you want to submit your own thing you can do it in my discord there's a channel where you just link it and link your social so that I can credit you and yeah I would love to keep doing this if this is something you guys are interested in but you'll have to let me know thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys again really really soon